Oh, good morning. It's good to be with all of you. My name's Miss Tandy, and I'm on staff here with Grace Kids. <laughs> So we've been learning about the southern kingdom of Judah. Some of the kings, like Hezekiah and Josiah, love God and lead the people to worship the one true God. But most of the kings are idol worshipers, and so the people disobey God. But God still has mercy and grace on the people, and so he raises up prophets, people like Hosea, Isaiah, and Jeremiah, to call the people to return back to him, to warn the people that if they don't repent, judgment is coming, but then to offer hope and say, there is someone coming, an anointed one, a Messiah, who will bring in a new kingdom that will never end. And so today we're going to move on to another prophet, a man by the name of Habakkuk, who wrote the book of Habakkuk. So go ahead, turn there now. And it is a hard book to find. It is, in my Bible, it's only three pages long, so it's really small, um, but it has an important message. And as you're turning there, a few things about Habakkuk. He lived about 600 years before Jesus was born. So he is prophesying at the same time that Jeremiah lives. However, the book of Habakkuk is not about God's message to the people of Judah. Rather, it is a conversation between Habakkuk and God. And Habakkuk is praying to God, and God answers. So let's begin in chapter 1, verse 2. And Habakkuk is praying. How long, Lord, must I call for help and you do not listen, or cry out to you about violence and you do not save? Why do you force me to look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Habakkuk is crying out to God saying, are you paying attention? Do you see all the evil that's going on? Because I don't see you doing anything. Habakkuk is lamenting. This is a prayer of lament. And lament is when we're crying out to God saying, this, things are really, really bad. Would you act? He's asking, like, if you are an all-powerful, all-loving God, how can there's so much bad stuff going on in the world? Kids, do you ever wonder the same thing? Have you prayed and God didn't answer the way you thought he was going to answer? Maybe you prayed for somebody to get better and then they didn't. Or maybe you prayed that your parents wouldn't divorce and then they did. Or you've probably been praying that God would end COVID and life would go back to normal and yet we are still stuck in quarantine. Is God good? Is God loving? Is God listening? God answers Habakkuk. He says, look at the nations and observe. Be utterly astounded. It's like, you're going to say, wow, for I am doing something in your days that you will not believe when you hear about it. Look, I am raising up the Babylonians. What he's telling him is, I'm going to bring this other nation, the Babylonians. They're going to come into Judah, and the evil people will be judged. They will be, the evil kings will be removed, and justice will happen. Well, Habakkuk is like, wait, 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 no, no. What are you talking about? The Babylonians? They're worse. They're worse than the people of Judah. How can you, I don't want you to answer this way. They're, they're more violent. They do, they're idol, worse idol worshipers. They show no mercy. What are you doing? In fact, the beginning of chapter two, he says, you know what? I will stand at my guard post. I'm going to station myself on the lookout tower. I will watch to see what he, meaning God, will say to me. It's almost like he's challenging God. Like, really? What are you doing? And God tells him, though it delays, wait for it, since it will certainly come and not be late. He goes on to say, I am going to judge the country of Babylon too. Every nation will, will have to be judged for the evil that they do, and all evil will be judged. Wait for it. And then he urges him, but the righteous one will live by his faith. He's calling Habakkuk, will you trust me. Habakkuk responds, Lord, I have heard the report about you. Lord, I stand in awe of your deeds. He's remembering, wait, I know what God has done in the past. 
He's delivered the people from slavery in Egypt. He planted them in the promised land. He raised up David. No, God has been faithful to all his promises in the past. He goes on to pray for that God would still work among the people of Judah. Revive your work in these years. Make it known in these years. But he knows judgment is coming. And so he says, in your wrath, would you remember mercy? He goes on to say what he knows to be true about God, that God is sending that anointed one, right? So he says, save your anointed one. He's looking forward to the day when Jesus will come. He doesn't know what that will look like, but he's trusting that God will keep his promise. And so then Habakkuk ends like this. He prays, though the fig tree does not bud and there's no fruit on the vine, though the olive crop fails, though the fields produce no food, Though the flocks disappear from the pen and there are no herds in the stalls. He's saying, if it's absolutely bad here and now, what's his response? Yet I will celebrate in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. He is believing that God will save. He's choosing to have faith. And that is the choice before us. Are we going to have trust? Trust God and have faith in his never-ending and steadfast love. We live after Jesus lived here on this earth. We know what happened on the cross. This is the ultimate example of evil happening to someone who did not deserve it. There were powerful, selfish people doing their evil and corrupt deeds when they killed Jesus. But God was using their evil to accomplish his purpose. And Jesus' resurrection shows that God is all-powerful to accomplish his purpose. And so we're waiting. We are in this time of waiting now. And what are we waiting for? Revelation 21 tells us. It says, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. And I heard a loud voice coming from the throne. Look! God's dwelling, it's with people, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Every tear. Death will be no more. Grief, crying, and pain will be no more because the previous things have passed away. And so we are in this messy, broken world, but we know how the story ends. So may we have faith and rejoice in the salvation of our God.